For this great secret of imagining is the greatest of all secrets that man could ever put his finger upon. Now here, let us take a few simple approaches to it. Suppose I wanted a better job, and I didn't have, as the world would tell me, it only reflects my own doubts, that I am not qualified. Well, they can't tell me anything other than what I am telling myself. So if I am in doubt, they will tell me that I am not qualified. Can't get it. Or times are not right for it. Or things are difficult. Let me ignore for the moment what my reflection conveys. And then let me ask myself, what do I want? Because this is only tell me what I have done in the past. What do I want now? When I know exactly what I want, let me dare to assume that I am now the man that I want to be. And walk in the assumption that I am that man. If I dare to persist in that assumption, then the outer world will rearrange itself and reflect that within me that I have fixed. And it will become in the eyes of the world a fact, what we call the fact. The reality really is in my imagination and not in its actuality. The whole vast world seems so real and we think that's where the reality is, in its actuality. It's not there, it's in the imaginal act. And then we project it upon the screen of space. Now there are numberless facets to this wonderful principle. Here I am looking now at this room, and you're all real within this room. And yet my home is far more real to me than this room. I come here twice a week for one hour. And I live in my home almost 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's far more real to me than this room. This is used by many people, and my home is used only by my little family, my wife and myself. Yet at this moment, it simply is a flat picture. And this is a cubic reality. Why is this the cubic reality that I know so little about? And that that I know so much about is only a flat surface. Because I am in this room now. If I am in the room, I give reality to the room. That when I leave it one hour from now, it also is a flat surface. I go home and enter my room, enter my home, and it is a cubic reality. Now here is the secret. Man is all imagination, and God is man, and exists in us and we in him. The eternal body of man is the imagination, and that is God himself. Being all imagination, I must be wherever I am in imagination. I am not anchored to this little body that I am wearing. I am wearing this body as I wear the suit of clothes. The day will come, the suit of clothes, I will wear it out and discard it. I will wear out this little body and discard it. But my immortal self is my own wonderful human imagination. And I am not confined to the garment that I am wearing that it may be seen in the world. I can sit it down in a chair and assume that I am elsewhere. And if I dare to assume that I am elsewhere, I make it real and give it all the tones of reality, I am where I am assuming that I am. The little, how will I know that I am there? Well, think of the world, that's all I do. If I dare to assume that now, this very moment, I am in New York City, how do I know that I am there? You say that I am all imagination, and I must be wherever I am in imagination. Well, how do I know that I am really there? Well, let me think of the world. Do I see Los Angeles around me? Am I standing on it? Well, then I am not in New York City. If I don't see Los Angeles 3,000 miles to the west of me, I am not in New York City. For were I in New York City, I would have to see Los Angeles one, or not one, 3,000 miles to the west of me. For motion can be detected only by a change of position relative to objects. Well, now, if I feel that I've actually moved, well, then let me 
actually see it in my imagination relative to the former state. I do the same thing concerning going up in the social world, or the financial world, or the intellectual world. Today, my friends know me for a certain person, as a certain person. Suppose I desire to transcend that person. Would they know me the day I transcended, or in the not distant future after I transcended? They would, if they're my friend. We're in contact. I would be the same friend, but they would see me differently. Now let them see me differently. I dare to assume that I am now the man that I want to be. Whether it be a financial gain, or social gain, or any other kind of gain. My friends would know it, well then, let them see me. All in my imagination. I rearrange the structure of the mind. And I fix it. As I fix it by sleeping in that assumption as though it were true. Well then, in time, if this principle is true, that all things must bring forth after their kind. I'm planting a new seed. That is the seed spoken of in Scripture. I must not deceive myself, because God in me, which is my own imagination, is not mocked. If I dare to assume that I am the man, that at the moment of the assumption, reason is denying, and my sense is denied, but I dare to assume and persist in that assumption, well then, if this principle is true, that all things come forth after their kind, then I shall produce that, the fruit of that seed. I have done it a number of times. So I tell you, I'm speaking to you from experience. I do it not only for myself, I do it for my friends. I call you friends. There is no charge to it, not one penny. Simply a friend would say to me, hear good news for me. Well, it takes it a little time, practically no time, to hear good news for a friend. I take his request, and then, to the best of my ability, I lift it to the state of vision, so that I can actually feel him or hear him tell me that things are as he desired them to be when he spoke to me. This is the story of Job, that when he turned from his own little self and turned to his friends, his own captivity was lifting. When he prayed for his friends, well, I call you friends. You come here and you listen to the things that I have experienced concerning God's law and God's promise. To whom should you turn if you can't make it work for yourself? But the one who is telling you. I never tire of hearing good news for people. So I can actually hear that you are what you want to be. Or that things are as you desire them to be. It costs nothing. costs you not a nickel. And as far as time goes, that's what my time is for. As the revelation came, you must stop spending your thoughts, your time, and your money. Everything in life must be an investment. 